Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, and welcome to round two of Antique Store Dealer versus Thrift Store. Uh, I am doing these videos kind of when I have other stuff to drop off at the thrift store anyway. Um, we're going to go dig around today uh, at the local Value Village and see if there's anything worth picking up. Um, I've been buying and selling antiques for quite some time and uh, yes, I have found things over the years at thrift stores, but I find it's always so much better to go and buy it from someone's home, but we're going to go do some uh, digging today and see if we can find some treasures. So buckle up <laughs> and we'll see what treasures await. the local value village i've heard some people refer to it as the vv boutique i don't know if you guys call it that or not i think my mother-in-law does uh but that's where we're going today i got to take a box of stuff in we'll see if uh i can find anything better than what i'm dropping off which is uh some you know periellus purses and stuff like that which are kind of high-end but uh they're part of uh an estate lot that i bought the other day and nothing that i really want to sell at the shop so off they go to a new home and we'll go do a little uh, searching around Okay, this is a pretty big location actually. It's like the size of a grocery store. Well, we'll have a little look-see. Last time I was here, didn't find a whole lot. Oh, antique picture frame. Four bucks, it's not a bad deal. Too bad it didn't have an antique picture in it. To me, that's more interesting. The little pictures are more interesting than the frame itself. Well, it's a glassware. I'll wander over to this side. Huh, my mom had that same makeup mirror. <laughs> I remember that when I was a kid, she'd have that thing set up. That's like back in the day. And you could set it to like evening, daytime office setting, look. How handy. I remember her using that. A lot of these tins are newer, maybe within the last few years or so. But that is an older one. That's probably from the 1940s or so. Embossed. You know, for $3, that's actually a pretty fair price. That's probably like maybe a $10 tin or something. Some metal home decor. If you uh, fell on that, I don't think. I think that would leave a mark. Maybe it's a burglary protection device. But so far that tin's not a bad deal. Like at a garage sale for a couple bucks, I probably would have bought that. I don't really need a whole lot of old tins right now at the shop. So hmm, debating, I might come back for that. We'll see. These are jewelry trees. That one's been bent a little bit. It's kind of leaning off to the side, but uh, we are starting to carry jewelry at the store. If I can straighten that out for three bucks, I might pick that up. There's another one right there. But that's got more of an old fashioned look to it. I think I'm gonna get that as a store display for the shop. Just have to do a little straightening to it, but not a bad find. I wonder if there's another one. Oh yeah, there's this guy right here. For $4, looks like an actual tree and then you hang the necklaces and stuff off. I'm trying to do some displays around the shop with uh, some rings and necklaces that I bought. So a couple little displays like that will do the trick nicely. Actually, now that I've got that on my mind, if I can find a couple little silver platters, those always make a nice place to display things. Even like a little bowl like that for putting rings or something in would be good. So now I've got a mission. Now there's stuff I'm actually looking for. One of these days, I'm gonna find myself a 
fancy Mont Blanc pen in one of these bags. Hasn't happened yet, but if a guy could find like a $100,000 watch in one of these bags, I'm sure I could find a fancy pen. Now that's the thing that, unless you're a diehard pen collector, you probably wouldn't know what to look for. But I do. Mont Blanc usually has a little white sort of star on the top. Typically they're like a burgundy or black color plastic, but no such luck right now. We continue looking, seeing what we can find. All right, this is what I'm kind of thinking of right here. These, you know, inexpensive sort of silver looking, sometimes they're silver plated. That's just silver look, but it's a nicer way to display jewelry in a showcase. That way when people want to see, like you put all your rings on one or all your bracelets on another. Much less expensive way of doing that. Just debating which one I want to get. Now I got a variety to choose from. I actually found enough stuff that I had to go get a little shopping cart. But since I'm looking for things I can use as a showcase display, I am finding some stuff. Um, I get people asking me all the time, they say, oh, I've got these collector plates that grandma had hanging on the wall. And they think they're worth like 40, 50 bucks each, but you can get them readily. Look how many they have here. Those are all box collector plates, collector plates, quote unquote. They're really not worth a whole lot, sadly. Um, I actually bought some of these before just for my kids to use as dinnerware because um, they're neat and they're relatively cheap. The other thing you see lots of are these again collector dolls they were probably really expensive when they were new probably like 60 or 100 dollars each uh doll collectors don't want them and they're really not worth anything anymore regardless of if they're nice or if they're porcelain they just have very very little value and so these dolls that were made in the 1980s and 90s as collector pieces are practically worthless today so you just keep on walking when you see them look they've got bins and bins of them down there Stores don't want them, sadly. And so they end up at a thrift shop like this. Again, Pinwheel Crystal, super expensive. You go to buy it at the store, but you can buy it cheap, cheap, cheap at estate sales or at places like this. Hmm. I think I see a coffee mug that came from a church because it's holy. Yuck, yuck, yuck. saw this sitting there. That's a lithograph. If that were an actual animation cell, it could be worth some money. They have it priced at $10. It's just a print with the Disney stamp on it, but that's from the Mulan movie. But if you see one that's a cell, which is like um, a cellulose back painted, those do have substantially more value. Some hand painted Easter eggs. Somebody's Pisanka collection. Sometimes I look at this uh, work like this embroidery and I think, well, somebody didn't see their grandma for probably like a month or more while she was doing that. But look at the beautiful frame that it's in. I mean, if you are if you have something antique that you could even reframe for 14 bucks, that's very inexpensive. Um, somebody paid to have this professionally framed. That's probably now like a $200 frame. And for me getting lots of antique items in, I could just use that for the frame, even if I don't need it for the needle point or the cross stitch, whatever that is inside. But that is a professionally framed picture. I just want it for the frame. It's got all sorts of little electronics and then I see this, the learning window teaching machine. Can't say that I've seen that. It looks kind of like maybe a, a speak and spell combined with a calculator. Early, early kids little teaching program. I'm sure that was super expensive back in the day. You know, probably from the 1980s, mid 1980s. Interesting little piece, but not something I need to bring back with me today. I don't have an immediate use for it. I'm trying to buy only things I've got a use for right now. I'm just having a quick look through the jerseys. Vintage hockey jerseys or vintage baseball jerseys can be worth a lot of money. Most of these look like they're, you know, minor league or, or so forth. They're not major teams. But if you find one that's old enough, you could have a few bucks on your hands. I'm going to continue down 
I don't know. I guess we'll walk over to the, maybe the jackets, have a quick browse through there and then go down to look at the toy area. Old sports coats. Some ties are pretty cool. Look at that one, it's a fish. <laughs> I don't know if you get that as a joke for someone or not. But uh, certain ties that I do look for, like the 1950s kind of uh, ties with the Hawaiian girls on them, the hula ties, that kind of stuff is really neat. You don't see it too often, but there is a possibility to find it at a thrift store like this. Okay, we'll take a little walk down the toy aisle. You sometimes find old stuff, like there's the old Fisher Price uh, pull along lacing shoe. It's not very complete though. You know, there's a few bucks we made on things like that, but not when it's incomplete. Maybe I'm being fussy. I always like to look through little plastic bags over here because that's where you might find the odd little gem. We'll have a browse through. And I'm just looking to see if there's any vintage, like 60s, 70s, 80s kind of cars in here the right car can pay for the whole bag that looks like an older matchbox right there yeah it's a or yeah it's a maybe a corgi jr if it's mickey mouse that car right there is probably worth seven to ten dollars they want 2.99 for the whole bag so but i'm looking to see if there's anything a little bit more exciting first Not seeing too much on the older side of things. What I'm looking for are the wheels. Um, if I can find one, I'll show you uh, the difference between a black wall and a red line. These things are important for car collectors. I can tell from like looking at some of these newer Hot Wheels, those are newer pressings, newer runs. That's uh, the older stuff that people are always after. And uh, the older stuff has better value. And if it's a matchbox too. I mean, sometimes you find an old matchbox in a bag like this. But so far the oldest thing I saw or the was that Mickey Mouse vehicle. No. Not seeing anything super old. Maybe next time. Looks like somebody gave away their Beanie Baby collection. It's funny, this little guy, this tiny little chihuahua, we got one of those for my son, Jason, and that was his favorite toy for years and years and years. So when I see that, I kind of just remember back to him and loving, he called it Teeny, I think, and uh, that was his favorite toy. Abigail, well, she likes the bigger, the ones with the eyes like that called a Beanie Boo. New, those are, I don't know, five, seven dollars a piece or so. So for three bucks, that's a good deal, but he's getting big and he's grown out of that kind of stuff. So it's not a thing anymore. Okay, I think I'm gonna head for the tills now. I got my basket full of loot. So I'm gonna go pay up and uh, call her a day. And because I donated, I also got a 20% off coupon as well. So it'll bring the price down even more. So I got my loot from today loaded into the car and I'm actually pretty happy. For 35 bucks, I got a few really cool things and I have a purpose for it, which is even better yet. This sort of decor shell I'm gonna to use to put uh, maybe rings and loose jewelry in. Same with the trays, you could lay out some necklaces. I've got the tree stands, the jewelry trees there for putting uh, longer necklaces and bracelets on. Um, so when I do this display case at my shop, this is all stuff that if I went to a display shop, you'd be looking at probably four times the amount of what I spent. Plus this picture, although I know somebody lovingly did all this um, work to put all that together, but I'm not interested in the artwork that's inside. I was interested in the frame because that's a really common size and I know going into uh, framing shops to get that done that a frame like that would be a couple hundred dollars so what you can do is you can just take whatever picture you want to put in there and get them to mat it and put it inside at a fraction of the cost so that'll make uh, a nice antique looking picture for very little money and I got 20% off too so I guess I did find some things today as much as I <laughs> don't normally find like the holy grail kind of antiques in places like that um it was good to go to get some uh supplies for my store 
and that picture frame will come in handy. I think I've got a couple pieces already in mind that I could go uh, frame and put in there. So in all, a pretty good day. It only cost me 35 bucks. So uh, thanks for watching today's little episode. We'll do these thrift store uh, tours every once in a while and uh, see if we can find some more treasures and keep you guys all entertained. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G. Uh, later this week, I'll post a picture of the jewelry showcase with all that stuff set up inside of it so you can see what it looks like. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook under Curiosity Inc. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to try and stay warm. It's nice and frosty out here in uh, Canada. We'll see you guys soon and bye for now.